Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Mentor Nation podcast. It's your host, John Abbas here, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to be with you today because I'm going to bring on an absolute superstar. She's going to share her incredible story, some great wisdom. Uh, but before I bring her on, just make sure you hit that subscribe button, whether you're here for the first time or you've been here before. Uh, I release episodes all the time, usually once a week, and I just want you to get notified every time I release an episode with just an amazing guest like the one that I have today. You know, I want to share something with you before I bring our guest on, and it's just something that is really interesting to me. As I and my wife, we build our own businesses. As for the last two years, I constantly interview highly successful, very productive people, entrepreneurs, people that are just doing really, really awesome things. I've realized that there's one thing that's just very apparent, and that is finding clarity of purpose, of passion, like getting clear on what you want to do is the single most important step of success. And I just love it when I have guests on this show that give their all to helping other people find clarity in their own lives, because the world can be pretty confusing. You know, there's everybody's vying for your attention. There's so many things that you can choose. And I really believe that finding clarity is so important. And so today I have the absolute honor of introducing Natalie Roy. Natalie is an ultra accomplished actress. She's an author. She's a coach. She's a regular on some of the most popular TV shows that we all know, such as law and order, the blacklist. And, you know, <laughs> I want to tell you something, cause I'm geeking out a little bit right here. She, there was a commercial that I loved when I, you know, probably about 10, maybe eight, nine, 10 years ago. And I watched it a hundred times back when I was just watching television and cable TV, like normal cable before streaming ever came out. Um, but it was this commercial for match.com where it was this lady and she was sitting on a, like on a chair next to the devil, like a huge red Satan. And they're having this, you know, interview and it's so hilarious on how they met on match.com. And I've probably watched that commercial a hundred times. And I couldn't believe when I had discovered that the, the, the woman in that commercial is my guest today. And I just was kind of geeking out about that. Um, Natalie is also the founder of the create podcast and, uh, she created that with her best friend and she pioneered the acting technique called the activated actor. And in this interview, Natalie shares her story and some advice that I think we all need, which is how to bring out your inner creativity so that you can achieve and have fulfillment. And I want you to pay attention to that because that topic is a lot more important than I think most people realize. I think all of us have something inside of us. We have something that drives us, something creative. And Natalie's going to share some of her strategies on how she helps people bring that out. This is just a great interview that I know you'll love. So without further ado, here's Miss Natalie Roy. All right, Natalie, thank you so Hi. much for being here. Welcome to the Mentor Nation podcast. So excited for our conversation today. Me too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And so for the listeners that are tuning in, um, in this episode, Natalie is going to share some of her wisdom when it comes to something that as an entrepreneur, I really, really, truly believe this. Um, and this is why when I saw your episode on it, it really hit home with me. I believe that this single thing creates more stress, heartache, anxiety than really any other single thing in life or work or business. And that thing is, is being a people pleaser. I think tons of us do it, even if we don't realize that we're doing it. I know I suffer from it. My wife always beats herself up for being a people pleaser or thinking that she's a people pleaser. And so uh, I just would love to have you share your thoughts because of your experiences, what you've been through, some of your coaching. But before we get into that, I would just really love to have you share a little bit about your story. You've done some really incredible things. Your life is is definitely an adventure. You are an accomplished actress and author. You host a highly successful podcast with your best friend called the Create Series. Uh, so it's easy to look at you today and be like, oh my God. But I want to know how it all started. Like where, where did this all begin? 
Oh my gosh. Thank you. What a great question. And it's like, where did all of this start? <laughs> Sometimes I have to ask myself, <laughs> how did, how did I get here? Right. And, and where am I? And is it even a place? Um, but I, I started as just a really intuitively curious person. I just, that's where I started. I started just asking questions. I was a seeker of why are we here? What's this about? What can I do while I'm here? What, what are these people doing? And really every thing I've become in my life has been led by this innate curiosity that I actually think we all have. I just feel grateful that I grew up in a home that that was encouraged. I was encouraged to ask questions and be curious. And it led me to want to be an artist, to want to explore being a creator. I do think we're all creators, whether you're creating a business, whether you're creating a meal for your family, whether you're creating a film, we, we have a creative process inside of us that is so fascinating when we can tap into how do I do this? That's a little Mm -hmm. different than everyone else. What is my unique expression? You know, it's as individual as my fingerprint and I get to be curious about that. And I get to try it on in all these different ways. I get to try it on with different relationships or different things. I'm sure you notice this in your relationship with your wife. It's like, it's it's a new creative process every day, (laughs) you know, and you're co-creating something all the time. And Mm -hmm. especially for entrepreneurs or artists that I work with, it's like, yeah, that, that curiosity of what is my potential and how is it here to come to life? And, and I'm in control of that. And so I think my life has been a series of asking that question and it getting answered in tons of different ways. So my favorite way, one of my favorite ways that it got answered is I'm an actor. And so I feel like I get to play lots of different people and say, how does it express itself over here? I get to do this show and this thing. And uh, in the books that I've authored or been a part of, it's, it's been that sort of process of just asking questions about life. How does this all work? How do we get here? What do I want to do while I'm here? So I think that everything that I've done, the business that I've created, the podcast that I do, it's all these questions about what is this process of being a human being, this creative force potential on the planet? What do I get to do with it? And no matter where I've gotten to this point in my life, I get to start over every second of every day, every choice I get to start over. So nothing is solid. Everything in life is fluid. Everything is moving. Everything is changing all the time. So instead of being reactive to that, how can I be in a co-creative experience with that? I love that. So you obviously you do quite a bit. So how does it like, how does it work today? Do you, I'm sure you get called for roles. You're focused, you know, you coach other actors and actresses. Um, you have your podcast. So like, what's like a typical day like for you? Do you just, you have your core business and then people call you like, Hey, Natalie, do you want to do this commercial? Or do you want to be in this episode of this? Is that like kind of how it works? Or like, how does it work for you on a day? It's exactly how it works (laughs) is I try to create structure and then I get to practice being flexible when the structure constantly changes. That's, that's what happens. But I do believe that structure creates freedom. And I do believe that having, okay, like, this is my core of my day that I build based on what's a priority to me, what my values are, what's important to me. I like to wake up in the morning and have solitude. I like to wake up and I start my day always. Well, I shouldn't say always because nothing is ever always, but I start my day with internal time, you know, whether that's yoga, meditation, journaling, connecting to myself, making the list of what's my priority today. What clients am I going to work with today? What emails am I going to send today? And really creating that not from a place of if I don't create that, what's going to happen or I'm going to get overwhelmed or I'm not going to have enough money, but creating from a place of what am I inspired to do today? What feels really good in my body to do today? So creating from from the energy by which I create changes my creation. So I like to start my day by operating from what do I want to create today? How do I want to create it today? And sometimes I want to create going with my husband to get a pain au chocolat. And that's what I want to create today, you know? So you have to give yourself the freedom that within your structure that you can also do that. And that's exactly the thing. Some days I sit on Zoom all day and I sit with clients and we work on acting roles or we work on mindset because for a lot of creative people, mindset gets in the way, limiting beliefs, yep. self-doubt, I'm a fraud, who would ever want to listen to me that comes up on the regular. And the work that I do with people is to say, Hey, just so you know, that doesn't mean you did anything wrong. That means you're in a process of expansion. 
if you think like I'm a fraud, that's probably a great thing because you're not the smartest person in the room. That's great. That's the creative process. Well done. Good for you for being brave. Let's, let's, instead of thinking that you're a problem to solve, let's actually look at those limits and those things that are coming up are just, it's just information. It's just something inside right. of you that wants your attention. It's just a part of you that needs a little more love. And then we keep on creating or we keep on doing what you came to this planet to do because no one else can do it but you. So I spend a lot of time wow. having those conversations and then someone will call and say, hey, we need you on set tomorrow. And then I reschedule everything and I go, okay, <laughs> I'm going to show up for that. <laughs> That's so fun. You know, it, some of the things that you said, especially when you said structure equals freedom and just some of the wisdom that you have is like, you could tell that you've worked on yourself a lot. And I think personally, it's why I love podcasts so much is because I can interview people that have probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on self-development and coaching. And, you know, the people that are listening get to access the very best of that wisdom for free. I, all you have to do is just pay some of your attention. And that, that's so crazy. Some of the things that you said, uh, I just thought that's really powerful. So how did you overcome a lot of these things? Like, I mean, I'm so I'm always so curious because especially being an actress, you're in such a vulnerable place. I mean, you're in the spotlight. People are watching you. You you can't just sit at home in your basement on some computer somewhere. Like, I can imagine that being one of the most difficult because they say pu public speaking is higher on the fear list than death for most people. Like, how did you overcome like some of those limiting beliefs? Was it a process to do that? gosh, I wish I had a different answer for you. But the truth is I haven't, <laughs> you know, it's like we all teach what we want to learn, right? Uh, like That's... I show up for the very things that I'm continuing to navigate. Right. I was just on set uh, this week on a project and I was sitting in my trailer waiting to go on set and really just sitting and ha I had my hand on my belly, my hand on my heart. And I was sitting with all the thoughts. You're going to forget your lines. You're rusty. Oh my gosh, you're going to, you're going to mess this all up. And I was sitting with that and just saying, there's nothing to fix. Those are just mm. thoughts. Those are just things that are natural. I'm a human being. The reason these things are coming up is because I'm doing something that I love more than anything. I care about it. The stakes are high. So these are all the natural things. So if anything, I've learned not to overcome it, but to be in a totally different relationship with it, where I just say, that's part of the process. And one of my favorite creators is Elizabeth Gilbert. And she talks about every time she's going to create something new, fear comes with creativity. It's like a twin. Right. And you can't say, once I get rid of my fear, then I'll create. No, they, they coexist. And so me feeling like I'm going to mess it up coexists with my mastery. And instead of trying to get rid of it, I go, hey, everyone gets to come along but I'm going to decide what the relationship looks like. Man, I love that. You know, the, pe the people listening would, would think that based on your awesome answers that I sent you all of my questions before this interview, I did not do that. And you have no idea what I'm going to ask. I'm just shocked at how great your answers are. I feel like this is just a great coaching session. So this segues us into what I really wanted to talk to you about today is something that even myself, I don't really fully understand navigating through this. And I feel like you can offer some really great insights because of your experiences and what you've done. Um, you know, I think as entrepreneurs and creatives, most of us are in the business of serving other people in, in some capacity or the other, right? Whether it's through entertaining, selling a product, offering some kind of a service. But one of the single biggest traps that I see people fall into, and when I say people, I mean me and, and the people that I know, is misunderstanding the line between service of others and being a people pleaser. I just want to see if you could speak to that. Like, where where is that line? Is there a line? Yes. I just I, I, I want to know. Yes. Well, it's so tricky because even in our most well-intentioned endeavors, there often is this element of transaction. And we do it so unconsciously and we're so well-meaning. And I say all of this with the deepest compassion for myself and you and anyone else in this situation that we do want to be in service to others. 
Right. And, and that's so genuine. I see it in so many entrepreneurs or so many artists that I work with. There is a genuine desire to be in service or to really help someone. And there's a transaction within it because we naturally feel so good when we've helped someone, <laughs> you know, that yes. we get yes. something out of it. We, we all get something out of the exchange and there's nothing to be ashamed of in that. And it doesn't, it doesn't make it a less noble endeavor that, that we are also getting a payoff from it. Right. And so first of all, we just want to acknowledge that in the setup of our humanity, when someone has a child, that child comes into the world and really even before conscious thought, what the child understands is I need this person to bond with me. I need this person to love me or I will die. That's it's right. the most primal thing about us that we need each other. And so what happens even as children is we start to look at our caregivers and we start to immediately say, who do I have to be in order to get the love that I need? Who do I have to, how do I have to please them? What, I, I frame this as an actor, what role do I play? And if you really get into the nitty gritty of, of watching yourself and, and if you can look back and have some memories of yourself as a child, I can say, oh, the role I played to get my brother's love was very different than the role I played to get right. my mom's love. Right. And we learn this from a very early age that we, we look at what is going on inside of others. And this is part of the incredible gift of how empathetic we are as human beings, which is our best quality. So this is not something mm. we want to shame ourselves for or get rid of, but I can see, Oh, this person is anxious. This person's upset. If I do this, it helps. And so there's something so ingrained in our psychology where we're looking for problems to solve. And sometimes we're <laughs> doing it in other people and sometimes we're doing it in ourselves. That's right. We can spend our whole life running around solving problems only to get to the next problem, problem, solution, problem, solution, problem, solution. And then you get to the end of your life and you went, wait, was that what I was supposed to do with my life? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> you know, and people pleasing is really one of the ways that we can identify this pattern. So when we see ourselves in people pleasing, this is not a moment to shame ourselves or judge ourselves and say, oh, I'm, you know, I did this again, what's wrong with me? It's actually a moment to say, oh, the, the people pleasing itself is a really cool opportunity for me to see a pattern playing out in me that is on autopilot that I get to take ownership of. And Part of what happens is we just want to see that the dynamic of people pleasing is fundamentally built on a fear. So we can operate from a place of, of fear. I, I'm scared I'm going to lose something. So I'll do this. And so I'll do this. So I don't lose it. Right. I'm scared. I'm going to lose your love. I'm, I'm scared. I'm going to lose your business. So I'll, I'll do this so that I don't. Right. And so it's, it's operating on sort of this channel of scarcity and fear, as opposed to when we really take action, that's not from that channel, that's really from the channel of trust, right? You know, which is, I trust that I don't have to contort myself, and we can still have an authentic relationship, or I trust that I can stand for what feels good for me. And, and that can actually be a possibility here. Now, what will happen, and I had this wonderful yoga teacher, Christy Marsden, who said this to me once, and I'll never forget. She said, when a people pleaser stops people pleasing, people won't be pleased. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really good. <laughs> really good, right? Thank that's you, really Christy. Good. So when, they'll be mad for a little while because you're being yeah, different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and, and we, what happens with people pleasers is our biggest fear is lack of connection. So we will operate using people pleasing as one of the tools to maintain connection because we're so afraid of a disconnection. So the minute you say, you know what, people pleasing is actually causing me to disconnect from myself and prioritizing a connection with someone else. And that's actually a deeper betrayal to my authenticity and my body than the connection with the other person. And when you get so present to that, like when you get present to like, oh, I've really abandoned myself. Oh, I've really betrayed myself. Oh, oh yeah. 
my connection with you can't be more important than that. Okay. So now I got to, I got to correct. Then what will often happen is we will stop the people pleasing. And then what will naturally occur is the other person will say, well, wait, this doesn't work for me. I liked it better the other way. Right. And what we've got to get is that they also have a right to feel that way. That it's their, it's their right to not be happy when we change the game that we've co-created together. Right. And so what will start to occur with, within people pleasing is it's better for us to not see the dynamic because once we start to see it, we're responsible to it. That's right. And what will happen is we have a choice really between two things. And both of these two things are things we don't want to feel. We either have the choice of guilt or we have the choice of resentment. As soon as we mm. see the pattern, we're either going to continue the pattern, but then we're going to feel resentful that we're continuing the pattern. I'm still people pleasing, but ugh, now I really notice what it does to my body. And ugh, now I'm resentful about you and I'm resentful about myself. Or we're going to change the pattern and then what we're going to feel is guilt. <laughs> and so what we've got to start to understand, and Brene Brown does amazing work around guilt and shame. Yes, yeah, she does. We've, what we've got to start owning is feeling guilty is not wrong. There's nothing wrong. It's not bad. Sometimes when I feel guilt, ooh, I feel guilty that I'm hurting this person, but it's a gateway towards more self-love and it's a gateway towards more authentic relationship. So guilt is like the price I'm willing to pay for more authentic relationship. Your answer is so much better than I was hoping for. Like they're so good. <laughs> and I just, this topic is so important to me because I study, like I love reading probably as you can see, but I just, I love to study people that their life was like on one trajectory for so long. And then all of a sudden it's like, everything just happens for them. And you just listen to interview after interview, after interview, especially content creators. And almost all of them say the same thing. It's like when I started creating content, that was me and not what I was trying to figure out what everybody wanted me to be and content that I thought everybody else loved when I just started creating it from inside of me. And you said it so awesome earlier because the number one reason people I think hesitate creating content that's themselves is that imposter syndrome. They think they're not good enough. They don't know enough, but you said it so well. It's like the thing that you teach is the thing that you're actually trying to learn and in teaching you get better. And I had a mentor that said this to me a long time ago. He said, you know, there's a difference between learning something like you're in a class, you're learning it and then learning it because you have to teach that class in an hour. Yeah. It's just the way you learn is so different. You retain it because you know, you have to actually use it. And so the best way to learn, yeah, it is to teach. And the best way I just, man, I love like all of that, that you said, that's really cool. And you answered, you know, two or three of my questions. Cause my next question was going to be like, how do you, how do you break that cycle? And it's just, it's hard. And I'll just use one more example. If, if you're okay with that, you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to have this topic too, is my wife and I, my, my wife bought a med spa about a year ago and she's trying to rebrand it and build it. And this, we got into this conversation about people. We actually got into a big argument about it because, you know, all of these old clients had purchased gift cards from the previous owner, tens of thousands of dollars worth. And then we took ownership and they wanted to redeem it. And we're just like, well, we didn't get any of that revenue and you're trying to redeem it. We're the new owners of a small business. And she's just in this battle. She's like, I don't want to make everybody mad, but. I don't want to let them walk all over me. Yes. What do I do? And so like, I'd love to have just your input. Like, you know, like what do you do in situations like that where you're just, you, you're divided? Yes. The first thing that I think is so important is just really allowing yourself to know that feeling divided is human and normal. And like, wow, what a gift that I feel divided because it shows I'm not like a crazy sociopath who doesn't care about anybody. You know what I mean? Like, wow. And, and really acknowledging in your wife, like, wow, look at the integrity that I love to bring to what I do. Look at the value that's important to me. And it's 
it's here even at the onset of this business. Right. And can I just celebrate the fact that the problem that I'm having is one that points to the kind of business owner that I am. So like, mm. wow, check mark, right? And then the, the next thing that I like to think when I'm dismantling the people pleasing and really, and what's underneath the people pleasing, because the people pleasing is a self-abandonment, you know, it, Ooh, for, for your wife to say, okay, well, I'll just honor everyone so that they're not upset is an abandonment of her and her business and, and what she's come into, you know? And so it's always sort of saying we, we live in this world where we tend to have these dualities. It's like, it's either right or it's wrong. It's this way or it's that way. You're this kind of person or you're this kind of person. Right. And always within that duality, it doesn't give us a lot of opportunity for solution because if I go one direction, that means everything in the other direction gets sacrificed. If I go the other direction, everything over here gets sacrificed. And I always like to think of like, what's the sacred third here? What's, what's the solution that's sort of like incorporating or creating a harmony between all of these? And I think that real leadership, especially in business ownership and entrepreneurship, leadership is really the thing that says, I lead with the vision of what I want to create and I lead right. with the energy that I want to create from. So if I'm in the energy of I don't know how to solve this problem or someone's going to be mad no matter what I do, then, then that le that's a leadership almost from a channel that I don't want to create from. Right. And so I can really ask the question of like, what does my sacred leadership show up as here? And there might be in your specific example, there might be like, what's the conversation that includes the previous people and these people? What, what's a conversation that could be had about solution? And sometimes what I like to do is I just like to ask the parties involved, what would you suggest as a viable solution for all of us involved? It's really good. That's, that's awesome. So I want to get into a couple cool stories because I mean, You've been on some pretty big sets. And just so everybody knows that's listening, I, I almost had a heart attack when I realized that was you in the Match.com commercial with the <laughs> devil. I've seen that like a billion times. And it was, you know, a while ago. Like, that's so crazy. Um, quick question. Though. Was that directed by Ryan Reynolds? Sort of. It, it was directed by Brian Rowland, who is okay. the, the head of basically uh, the, the lead DP in Brian's co and Ryan's company. Uh, but Ryan was uh, with us. You know, he would he would call and video in and give us notes on set. And uh, he wrote the scripts as well. So <laughs> when we were on set getting new scripts, it was Ryan was furiously writing and coming up with ideas and sending us his words and such. So he was very involved, which was really cool. Is he like that funny all the time? In my experience, he is really that funny and really very kind and very cool and really like someone you would just want to sit and, and talk with and really just a genuine person. But the way his mind thinks and works, the wit, the speed, um, mm. and also George Dewey, who is uh, one of his producing partners, it's like the combination of these two minds together. You're just like, I don't know how they come up. The, most of the <laughs> lines that we were saying on set, they were coming up with in the moment. Say this, uh, say this this time. Uh, in this take, say this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes I was laughing hysterically and I was like, I have to get it together so I can actually deliver this content. <laughs> That's so funny. I think um, when I was listening to one of your episodes, you, you really harped on the fact that you're a type A personality. Have you always you been type A? <laughs> yep. Have you always been type A or is that something that you built for yourself out of necessity um, based on your career path? What a brilliant question. Thank you for asking so I can think about it. Um, <laughs> I will say as long as I can remember, I have been this way. I have definitely been, uh, even as a kid, I think I just really like to tell people, okay, we're going to make this play in Grammy's basement. You're going to play this role. You're going to play this role. Then you know, I'm going to do the big song. Like, I think I was always like very structured. And I think that there was something gotcha. I liked about that. I can even remember being in school as a young kid and the, the professor, the, the teacher would 
assign something on a Monday and it was due on a Friday and I would do it on Monday night. Like I was so, I was so organized, I would say. Um, and so I do think that there's something in my personality that has always wanted to leave room for the unexpected. Mm. And I know that by getting all my homework done, by having everything in place, I know that then I create lots of space for the unexpected. And I feel like as an actor, it's like, I pick up a script and I do a lot of analysis and a lot of work and I show up and I make sure my first uh, take on set is like me executing all those choices so that then all subsequent takes, okay, let's do it another way. Let's then my artist gets to play and I get Mm. to have freedom and I let my intuition come forward. Now, I think some people have a different process. I think some people let their intuition and their their sort of uh, instincts lead them into more structure. So I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think that's just the way I'm built. And I think my best friend who I do my podcast with is built the exact opposite way, which is why it's cool for us to be best friends and also co-create together because I... I get the benefit of how she creates when we create something together and she gets the benefit of how I create. So I do think there's something valuable, whether it's with a business, whether it's with a romantic relationship, whether it's how you parent, whether it's how you do anything. I think it's just important to always be curious about like, how does my system work? And what's it, what information is it trying to give me? And what's it trying to tell me? And as you get more attuned with yourself and, and what your rhythms are, I much like nature when we don't try to, you know, walk outside in our bathing suit when it's winter, like we honor the rhythm of, of nature. We honor the rhythm of the seasons. We honor how it works. We honor when it's time to expand and when it's time to contract. I think when we can listen to our bodies, businesses have seasons, our bodies have seasons. We're not meant to be at the same pace and the same rhythm all the time. And your body's always telling you. And I think that the more intuitive you can get with how does my body like to work, then I think you can create really magical things. And that's when I always hear the stories of like Paulo Coelho wrote his famous book, The Alchemist in Two Weeks. Oh, great book. And I'm really? like, yeah, he wrote that in two weeks? Two weeks. Yeah. What? And I'm like, that's how that happens. That's someone not trying to push, not trying to force, not trying to hit a deadline. That's someone listening and honoring a rhythm. And then the rhythm ends up taking you further faster. Wow. That's, that's really incredible. So if it's okay with you, I'd love to shift just into a couple rapid fire questions. I, I think a lot of people <clears throat> that you know, have normal everyday jobs or they clock in or they, you know, they, they're in an industry where it's kind of the same thing every single day. We have this wonder and curiosity uh, about the lives of creators, right? Like people that travel the world and they get to be on sets and they get to meet really cool people. So I've always just wanted to ask a few questions, like, if you don't mind. So can you just share, like, what's a really cool story of an experience that you had on a show or a film, or you met somebody really cool? Like, do you have any that just stand out? That's just like, man, that was a really great experience. I mean, so many, that's, what's (laughs) really exciting. It's like, you can kind of find an exciting moment anywhere. And certainly every, every set that I've been on, I've really brought this element of curiosity of like, I'm really interested in seeing how people work. I was on the set for a television show, a Showtime show called The Loudest Voice. Mm -hmm. And um, the gentleman who was playing the lead, he was just in character all the time. (laughs) Like he was in this, this suit, literally a fat suit and in this world and just just kind of being a fly on the wall and watching what, what it's like to see a person just diving into a state of being and not leaving it. Like even when we're on lunch break, I was like, that is cool. Method I, acting. Is that what yeah. that is? Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> that's cool. You know, I, whether it's for you or not, I'm like, that's just a cool thing to experience on set. And then I've had other moments on set where, you know, the lead had to be rushed away to go to the next scene. And so I did my scene with the broom handle <laughs> because they weren't in the scene anymore because they had to go to the next <laughs> shoot. Um, But across the board, I can say what's really interesting is it's fascinating to know that at every level of the game, even Oscar winners who I've seen on set, even, you know, people who you would say are like at peak performance are still insecure, are still people pleasing, 
are still just wanting to do a good job, still think they're a fraud, still think they're never going to get hired again. And so it gives me so much comfort to, again, know it's not something that you overcome. It's something that you get into relationship with because you don't only get the opportunity to do what you love with your life. Once you get to a certain level, you get to do it anytime you want. It's so good. My, my final question is just, you know, is there anything else that maybe I didn't cover or ask on this topic that you think would be of value to somebody listening? Maybe a question that I just, I missed like anything because you've done podcasts on this topic before and you've covered all facets of it. Um, so I just want to make sure I covered all bases for the listeners today. Is there anything that you want to maybe just add on top of it? One thing that I think is really helpful with dismantling people pleasing is just being vulnerable enough to say all the truth out loud. Mm. So if you and I have been in a people pleasing relationship and I've now seen that I've abandoned myself in this and I'm very worried what your reaction is going to be. The best way to go about this isn't to say, okay, I have a boundary now. We're not doing this anymore. Cause then you're going to be confused and triggered and, and you might be triggered anyway, but the real opportunity is to say, Hey, I just want to say, here's what I've noticed about myself. This is what I do. This is what I've created. I need to change the game here. And also, I just want to say, I completely get that you're allowed to have whatever reaction to this that you want. And I will not make this personal and I will not take offense to it. And the reason that I'm doing this is because my intention for our connection is for it to be even better than it's been. So I'm, I'm changing the rules here and you have every right to feel however you feel about it. And I will respect your process in the same way my process might have taken me some time to get to. Whatever time it takes you, I will respect your process as well. Just please know that my intention here is for us to have an even better communication or a better relationship or a better client relationship I, I want to, this is the vision that I want to create. And I would love for you to be a part of it. And I think when you inspire people to get on board with what an intention or a vision is, it changes something from what the Gnostics talk about as being from like the tree of knowledge. It's like yep. a, tr a truth that I know in my mind to a noema, which is a truth that I live. Ooh, that's really good. You know, I want to add just to that a little bit, like something that I've noticed is you know, people pleasing versus, you know, making the shift. It's, it's like a muscle that when you work it, like, you know, it's like, you're so afraid of confrontation, but like, once you have a difficult conversation, you walk away or you do something really difficult and you walk away. There's just that, that feeling of confidence that makes the next one easier and the next one easier. And even if yes. you are really great at it and then you don't do it for a while, you lose it and you could go back backwards until you get back to that place. Like, I mean, I just like, I've had lots of situations where I feel like I'm on top of the world and then things are just smooth and easy for a little while. And then a difficult conversation needs to be had. And I'm like, man, you know, like six months ago, I really wouldn't have given a shit to have this conversation, but now I'm like, I can't sleep. <laughs> I'm like thinking role-playing it in my head the whole night. I'm like, dang, this is, so it definitely is something that gets more comfortable over time, I think. Yeah. And also you can bring that to the conversation too. You can say, hey, I feel really uncomfortable. and like, I'm not good at this. <laughs> and I just want to, you know, it's like, you're allowed to bring the whole truth. Sometimes what we do is it's like, I'm about to have a phone call with you. And I'm thinking, I just want this to go well. I just want us to be okay. But then I get on the phone with you and I don't say any of that. I say, okay, <laughs> here's what the thing is. And it's like, but it really disarms the situation right. when I say, I just want you to know you didn't do anything wrong here. We've mm -hmm. created a dynamic that I would love to change. And the reason I want to change it is because this is my dream for our relationship. And I don't exactly know how to do it. I'd love for us to figure out together how to do it. But the insight that I have at this moment is the way this has been going. I've been abandoning myself. And I, I know that you also want to create with me a world where I don't do that. Man, I really, really love that. So I need to take the last minute and it just, I want you to really promote yourself now. Talk about your podcast a little bit. 
Um, you know, what's the purpose premise of your podcast? Who's it for? And then for anybody that listens to this episode, that's just like, I need more Natalie Roy in my life. Like where's the best place to like follow your content or connect with you and just follow kind of what you're putting out into the world. I'd love to have you just share that if you don't mind. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. Um, well, yes, you can, you can come and find my podcast. We have, I think, 201 episodes. So Ooh. you can, you can get a lot of me in your ears if you really wanted to, <laughs> and it's all free. So <laughs> go for it. Um, and you can go to our website, which is www.thecreateseries.com. On that website, I have meditations. We have some classes. We have our podcast. You can find out about myself and my best friend, Kristen, and and that's kind of the content that we create. We also do have a Facebook page, which is the Create Community Facebook page, and it's create an acronym, c.r.e.a.t.e, and CREATE stands for Community Reclaiming Every Artist's True Expression. And the reason it stands for this is because we're all creators. We're all artists. The way you raise your children is a work of art. The way you do everything is an art form and you're a powerful creator. And so we have this beautiful Facebook page. It's an incredible community where people just support each other. You can go on in there and ask questions. You can get support if you need coaching, both uh, myself and my friend Kristen do this. And we can also give you lots of resources and, and ideas for places you can find answers that we might not have for you. So if you feel like you need a community, uh, we got you. And uh, we definitely have a lot of podcasts as well. Um, And you can also go there if you want to work one-on-one. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for your time today. And just everything that you shared was just incredible. And hopefully I can have you back on one day. We can hit on another topic, you know, in the future, Uh, But seriously, best of luck with all that you're doing and all the content that you're creating. And I hope that you develop a lot more fans just from this episode, because I know you you shared some just really insightful things and it it means a lot. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your questions and your time. It means a lot to me as well. Absolutely. 